Good morning from La Lande, where the peacocks are feeling very chatty today. They're definitely the most beautiful birds in the world, but maybe not the most melodic. I'm on my way to see our sheep, and of course, I think it's very important to always match your mug to your activity. But you're going to see quite a change in them, because when we were away at the Chateau de la Croix Boisée last week, Kirsty and the Lalanders did the extraordinary job of managing to get our sheep and actually shear them. Hello! <laughs> this is not the pink camera. Oh. <laughs> Oh, look at that baby. Sorry, little lady. <laughs> Fresh and light. <laughs> Where are the other ones? Where are they? They are naked. No, she's yeah. Very quite naked. Well, and and Amory too. <laughs> he can be in. Oh, there they are. Oh. Your head's just off. Oh, poor thing. Oh, oh. <laughs> really mad. Yeah, I'm really mad. It's a bit messy where the horns because its horns are getting in the way, but yeah. uh, come on, you good boy. It's okay. got new tyres all round as well, come so he, he will have traction. <laughs> Bye, Aloysius. Love you. <laughs> come on, buddy. <laughs> You're going to your favourite place, Aloysius. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. How do you not have Molly helping you with it? <laughs> <laughs> really? Do you think Molly would be a help? No. <laughs> Come on, Aloysius. Come on, buddy. He doesn't want to walk? Take him here, mate. Come on. Good boy. It's a long way to get there. <laughs> Thanks, darling. <laughs> You want to do this? <laughs> no. Come on, come on. Oh, there we go. And he's Jesus eating already. Christ. Look, you see? Yeah. You will love this place. The other ones are coming. So it's... Our general is here. The old general. <laughs> <laughs> see? You're talking with them. <laughs> It's weird because you're doing a sheep noise, not a peacock noise. Well, but you're attracting I'll, them too. I think they'll just come anyway. Uh, they're curious things. Yeah. The boss man is here. We're safe now. Oh, that's sweet <laughs> as anything. That's really cute. Yes. Everybody's kissing him. I love Amory's no-nonsense approach to moving the sheep. They're all happy now. I was going to go over and show them to you closer. They're in the distance, but it turns out it rained a lot in the night. The ground is soaking wet and I am in my slippers. So instead, we're just going to wave hello from a distance. They are so, so adorable. Bye, sheep. Actually, on the way back in, there's something I really want to show you because it's actually quite hilarious. I don't know if you remember, but we were trying to source a rose as close as possible to the lost rose of Lalande, which was the Contest de Madayac rose. And it was this beautiful yellow and blush pink combination. And Davy saw some of the same sort of variety of rose that seemed very similar and that he thought might be one of the modern descendants of that rose. And we planted them amongst the lavender all the way around the courtyard. And oh yes, as you can see in the distance, they've all come out white. What is going on? But I don't think I'll change these. I like the white with the lavender too much. And it's the same with all of them. And I have to say, they are extremely pretty and they look incredible with the lilies amongst the lavender. And it's possible that white roses with the lilies and the lavender are actually better than yellow and pink ones would have been. So it may be a happy accident, 
The lavender's not quite out yet, but when we have that full blue lavender with the white roses and the white lilies, so spectacular that I don't think I want to change them. But at the same time that he chose those roses, Davy chose another variety of rose that was very similar to the contest in that Ayak rose, and we planted it in the vegetable garden, so I'm hoping we can go and find it. I saw one that's a strong contender, so I just want to see if I can find anybody who might know if that was the one that they planted. I don't know that, but I know where is the rose that you were gifted. Chaumont sur Yeah, It's very beautiful. I saw how it uh, blooms for the first time. <gasps> this one! How beautiful. So this is the Chaumont sur Son rose. Yeah which they gave to me when I went there to film their big wine celebrations. Still tiny this year, but it's going to be beautiful here. Okay, round here is the one that I thought might be the one of the Contest de Nadayac type ones. Just look at that colour. Yeah. It's really similar. Do you think you might have planted one here? Davy and Kirsty, I think, or... Okay, so Davy, yeah, if you're watching, is this one of the ones that you planted? Because look at that colour. That's much more what I was expecting from them. So I think this is almost certainly one of the most beautiful, beautiful rose. I've been distracted from rose hunting by the sight of Thor, who appears to have been maybe caught in a rainstorm and is drying his feathers. At moments like this, I can't quite believe I live here and that this is actually real and happening in front of me. Now I'm going to go to the greenhouse because apparently Pavlina has been knotting the garlic into lovely plaits. Hello, I've come to see your garlic, which is a weird thing to say to someone. It's a very common thing to say to a gardener. <laughs> <laughs> no way. That's so gorgeous. Ta -da. Perfect. You might think that it's uh, some kind of traditional Ukrainian way, but no, I watched it on YouTube and <laughs> there you go. It is done and it is perfect. Yeah, I oh, remember now how we did onions with Chloe. <laughs> oh, it just makes me feel safe to see lots of garlic. Mm. Yeah, we can't cook without that. Exactly. All right, I'm going to go in. See you later. See you. You are, as always, a miracle worker. Thank you. Honestly, I was feeling a bit blah. Blah. <laughs> blah. blah. Yeah, just blah. blah. <laughs> and I don't feel that way anymore, Amazing. all because of you. Annalise has come to do the hair of one of our guests this evening, so she's given me a blow dry at the same time, and I'm feeling quite fabulous. This is a lot of backcombing and root powder. A little bit of root powder. It just adds to it. We're doing changing of the colour. Let's just change, make little changes here and there. Yeah, volume. This is it. I love, and I love the fact that you're coming around regularly. I know. Right? I'm going to be so here good. All the time now. Oh, sorry, I'm just bouncing up and down with the camera. I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you. I feel so glamorous. You're very welcome. It is absolutely beautiful. I think this is one of my favourites yet. And it's the Rothschild birds. Yes. Just gorgeous. Well done, darling. Thank you. Shall I call everyone through? Yes, absolutely. Go for it, Philip. <laughs> well, Maria wanted me to explain what it was. So she was hard at work at the main course. So um, it's a tomato tartare with avocado, dressed with flowers from the garden and a vinaigrette that's homemade. And it was made from the other flower that Isabel stole from the neighbours. <laughs> no. Hello, neighbours! <laughs> we're, not, we're not going Busted. to the back. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. And welcome. Cheers. Lovely to meet you all. Cheers. Thanks. For the main, oh, yeah. we're having uh, duck confit with two different ways of corn preparation. One is polenta and the other one is a corn mash mm -hmm. and a cherry sauce. Oh, this is completely new. We haven't had any of these things before. I love both duck and corn, so I'm very excited. That is incredibly exciting. Apricot tartare. Yes. Thank you. It is a hot, muggy day at La Lande. Even the peacocks are up and about. I can hear them in the distance. It feels as though it's going to rain, but I hope there won't be thunderstorms because tonight we're going with our guests to the local village and there they're having a little outside aperitif party. I'm running downstairs because some of our guests are about to leave. I want to say goodbye to them. It's been so lovely meeting you both. And you, thank you very much for I'm very us. sad that you're leaving today. So, yeah, we, so we... Thank you for the editing advice. <laughs> because your mother was an editor in yeah. Nouvelle Vague in the 60s. Yeah, yeah, she was. That's amazing. So if there's any improvements in the videos, uh, it will be down to you too. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Mummy and Percy. You seem to be already on a mission. What's happening? We are on a mission. 
We are going to move the chicks to the sunlight and the grass. Sunlight and grass for the chicks? Yes. It's a chick manifesto of 2023. Absolutely. We are committed to exposing them to real life. <laughs> oh, they don't know what's about to hit them. <laughs> They're only coming out to the sunshine for the day to yes. see how they get on. Yes, see how they get on because we're expecting rain. I don't know how true it is, so I don't want them in their permanent position yet. Okay. okay, give them a, a day before going back under their heat lamp then. I don't want a car to reverse into them here. Do we put them under the tree? Oh, yes. the I don't want them in, uh, in the shade. I want well, them... the shade and... Yes. Yeah, dappled. That's what we want, Percy. Okay, dappled. Okay, uh, look, I know I'm the one doing the filming, but I'm going to carry this with Percy. Mm. I'll be honest, I'm not convinced this is a two-person job, but we're both too stubborn to let go, so two-person job it is. Okay. <laughs> Never seen flowers before. No, they haven't. That would be lovely. How does this thing work? We could build a log cabin, no problem, Percy. We've got this. Well, we're already done a steel one, so a log one will be easy. There we go. We have to put um, water and everything in it yes. and. This, it's going to be wonderful for them to feel the wind on their feathers. It's going to be lovely for them. Okay, I'll get them. One escaped me this morning. That one is a rascal. <laughs> I knew it. He was going to be trouble from day one. <laughs> you know? Yes. I think they're going to get through there. So we can turn it over. No, they won't. Yes, they will. He knows nothing about chicken. Oh, I know lots about chicks. I've got you. <laughs> not good. Chicks do things that you never expect them to do. To be careful, eh? The only unknown kindness. This one that's a state escaped, he's there. He doesn't know what to do with his freedom. No, he doesn't know. Yeah. There another one. Oh, there goes another. There's another one. There's our two escape artists. Ooh, that's Pepper. I can't believe how big he's got. All chicks ready for transportation. Mm. Wait for me, I don't want to miss it. <laughs> Look at them. Huh? What is this new environment? <laughs> they look like little dinosaurs now. They're so fluffy at first, and then they go through this awkward teenage phase where they're half fluff, half feathers. Eleven of them, all kinds. Good morning. Morning. This is uh, chick therapy. Okay, therapy. Look, the therapy's working for Molly. <laughs> Molly's loving the chicks. They are so big now. So suddenly. Oh, it's already eating little bits of grass and discovering. Are they really? And a third? Yeah, we might as well. Give them a proper playpen. Hello. It's amazing how well behaved Molly is. All these fun things to chase. Nothing. Nothing at all. Just calm. She's just, she's just no, she nothing it. but calm. Yeah. They're having a whale of a time. They're absolutely loving it. They're scratching in the soil, looking through the dirt, doing everything they're supposed to do, which is like a miracle as they've never had a mother. Here comes Percy with the waterproofing in case it rains. We've decided that if it rains, they're going to have plastic here rather than being moved back in. They're having too much fun. Yes, it is so happy. I love the way Molly is she not is, leaving our side no, today. She's, not, she? she's usually just next to Amory, but this is far more interesting. Molly's interest is becoming increasingly peaked. Oh, we don't know who's more <laughs> frightened. Molly appears to be more scared than the actual chickens. And she's going around smelling every inch of the cage. No part of the cage left unsniffed. <laughs> I think it's quite lucky for the chicks that there is that barrier in place right I now. So too. <laughs> Mummy's decided that what the chicks need is a dust bath. Yes, but it's true. Now they have another thing to explore, the sand pit. Mummy is doing a lettuce training course. 
it's not going well. I've come to the kitchen and I've got some of the leftover polenta from last night. Let's see if this does better than lettuce. Okay, ladies, and sadly, quite a lot of gentlemen, here is polenta. Whee! Oh, seriously, no curiosity at all? None? Bit of polenta being attacked over there. Oh, I think someone realizes she is onto a good thing. Yes, this is it, this is it, they've learnt it. There is a feeding frenzy at the polenta. They have a big day ahead of them. They have to discover the perches. They have to discover the dust bath. The sand pit is not drawing them yet. So a day of exciting discovery. With all the excitement with the chicks, I thought we'd come out and see the chickens. Look at mummy, the chicken whisperer. I sometimes worry that she likes them more than me. The thing about animals that can't speak is that they can never really offer a differing opinion. You look so happy with them. They're absolutely wonderful. And it's the same with Mammy now, your mother. She would sit for hours looking at the chickens. Absolutely. They're such innocent little creatures, you know. Innocent Mummy. We saw a pack of them once hunt down and kill a mouse. I know. Wouldn't call them innocent. Imagine if they were 12 times larger than they are, would you call them innocent? <laughs> <laughs> or would you be running in the other direction? It's incredible how competitive they all are. Yeah, not so innocent, hey, mummy? And there, she's, she's got an attitude. She'll steal from anything. What? That is a ripe yellow raspberry. This is a very big moment. It's amazing. Mummy, I've eaten three. They're perfect. Yes, they're perfect. Look here. So I was going them. to say, I wonder if there are enough for everybody or if we should, I literally, we should have them ourselves. I just phoned Maria and she said there's 13 of us at dinner tonight, so there's not enough. Uh, so we may as well eat them, she said. However, I think I might take 13 nice ones for her to use as a garnish in the dessert. But the rest, it's free for all, mummy. I think that leaves us at least four to attack. <laughs> Mummy and I deemed actually there are enough raspberries to have a garnish in tonight's meal for everyone. So we're going to take them in just in case Maria wants to use them. Looks as though there will be some kind of melon in tonight's meal, which is delicious. And I'm just making tea for Mummy and Percy. And one of our guests just came with Fortnum and Mason shortbread rounds. So they've gone straight onto the tray. Mummy and Percy are hanging out in Philip's study because your internet's not working in your apartment, is that right? Yes, absolutely right, and it cannot be reconnected easily. It has to be reconfigurated. Oh, no. We just spent two hours on the phone with Ian Roy. Yeah. Oh, trying to sort it out. So we come to the conclusion head is like that. that you had it cut so that we will leave. No, it was so that it would take you so long to fix it that you could never leave because you'd be in constant fixing of internet mode. Well, we might just give up. <laughs> no, I know you two. <laughs> you see, that was my cunning ploy. You two never give up. Okay, the great news was that just as I was making tea, a lovely guest arrived with Fortnum and Mason shortbread. Ah! So that's been oh added. Goodness, how kind of them. There you go. Thank you. Wow. Dig in. I'm getting ready to go out to the party in the little local village and the weather is getting better and better. So it looks as though it's going to be a perfect evening. But I thought I would quickly show you what I'm going to do with the lovely Baccarat bottles that I bought. I bought this little set of three things. At the moment, there's nothing in them. And I also have this lovely perfume bottle. The great thing about French supermarkets is you can just buy really cheap Eau de Cologne there. So I have this one. This was actually a little more expensive than usual because it's not in a plastic tin. This was $7.90. You can get them much bigger for about the same price, but in a plastic one. It's a little bit like the time Philip said that we like to splurge on the decanter, save on the whiskey. If you buy really lovely perfume bottles, you can get slightly cheaper colognes. And when it comes to a cologne, honestly, this smells very, very lovely. And if it's just for sprinkling on the bed in the evening or on some of your linen, it doesn't have to be the finest cologne in the world. And it, you feel a million dollars if you're using it from a beautiful perfume bottle. So I'm going to choose one of the bottles to put this in. And then they have other flavours. They have a rose one and a lavender one that I could get in future and use for the other bottles. I wanted to start with one of these, but I'm going to go for the clear one because you can tell there's nothing in it, whereas it's less obvious with this one. The bathroom may have been the best place to do this, but fingers crossed it's going to go okay. Perfect. Should have a little bit left over. I may as well put it in this one as well, actually. Then I can get the rose one to put in the little bottles later. 
And then as I don't really use cotton wool here at the dressing table, I use it in the bathroom instead. I thought what would be white and look a bit cotton woolly, but much more fun. And my answer was, of course, chocolates. I don't actually know if they're going to fit. We might get about three in. They'll be for my dressing table emergencies. Oh, four. Do you think I can fit a fifth? I think I can. Mm, not sure. No, it's going to be four. Four emergency Raffaellos. That is much better. And it will be better again when I get a mirrored surface to put onto the dressing table. But it's still super pretty in the meantime. I'm going to run now because it is nearly 6.30. The party is starting in the local village at 6.30. I say party. It's just a lovely little temporary bar that they bring out every weekend in summer. It's the association called A La Bonne Vauvre, And it was one of the charities that we helped last year through Cadeau at the Chateau. And it's incredible what they're doing with their funds. They're doing wonderful things to the village and really helping it to live again. Many of you remember the extraordinary little Christmas party and market that they had. I had it as one of the advent calendar videos but they also have this lovely weekend temporary bar that comes so that people can meet in the summer okay i'm going to be honest in my enthusiasm i may have overdone it on the eau de cologne i'm gonna to have to give everyone a wide berth philip's laying the table early today as we have to rush off so early here again have... annalisa another hairstyle yeah but look i don't need you because it's lasted so well it's really lasted really I... good have you been using that have you been like re on the i always the... Zhuzh, zhuzh. But honestly every time you do it it lasts for days it's really incredible. yeah oh that's amazing yeah you look and your dress is like wow but so is yours oh actually we're very similar today a sort of pale blue floaty. Blue, blue, blue. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the kitchen, Mary We, Maria. Yeah. Everybody with baby blue, and I'm like all the colors in one. But that's you, Natty. You're the colorful yeah, one. They told me that it's because I'm the brunette one. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Philip, darling, we have to run off. Yeah, we yeah, have to no, go. Waiting. Everyone's waiting. We're going in convoy. It looks spectacular. I know it's going to look great. We've got to go. Again. Are you excited? Yes! Hoorah! Not every day the mayor asks you more drinks. Oh, there are so many people here. It's amazing how everybody in the village supports this. And they've got this lovely bar. It's just for the summer, every night of the weekends. And it's in the most beautiful spot. Oh, we're quite lucky with our local bar. A bottle of wine is nine euros. 2.50 for a beer. That is not bad. Let's just introduce to everybody, this is our mayor from the local town who is serving at the bar. Alors, vraiment, c'est tout ce que vous faites pour pour la personne. Alors, vous rénovez le bar oui. et vous allez... L'association va, en fait, va gérer. un bar et un bar associatif. Voilà. Des expos de peinture, de, de la musique, voilà. plein de choses. Vous avez on va l'inaugurer. Oh, merci beaucoup. Ah, si, si, si. Ah, oui. On est ça. You have a new apprentice. Yeah. You've got yourself a new job. <laughs> I think that the music is about to start. It's so lovely to see children being involved as well, keeping the tradition going. I love living here. Now let's go find my guests. You found the chips. Come on, you have to have one. I would love to have one. Thank you so much. Because if you don't, I will. I think they're making what? They have at Castle Ten Beth. Are they willows? It's willows, so I think they're making yes. it because like they've left entrances. That's so cool. Oh, it's going to be so pretty. We should do this somewhere at La Lande as well. In the forest would be amazing. Yeah, just weave it all together yes. at the top. But I just wanted to show everybody how beautiful Crozon sur Vauvre is. The little river is the Vauvre. It's tiny, but it's classified as a primary pisciculture river. Um, maybe. A what? 
<laughs> that sounded bad. That sounded like it was an excellent toileting river. <laughs> That's what you're saying. <laughs> no, no, it's an excellent fishing river. Ah, Very quality fishing. Ah, river. as in like Don't Pisces. Don't you have a bad mind? I did not have a bad mind. <laughs> I've got bad English. <laughs> you have perfect English. I love it here. I really do. And just to have the band and the bar, it's pretty magical at the weekends. Very and lucky. Even nibbling on some chips. Don't tell Maria. I have lived here for 18 years and I've never crossed this bridge and I've never been Cross? up that path. Never. 18 years. Well, let's rectify that right now. In stilettos. She's beauty, she's grace. <laughs> Do I hear sarcasm? Nope. Oh, this is beautiful. Isn't this reminding you of home? Yeah, well, it's only like five kilometers away. but <laughs> that might be why it's a bit familiar. <laughs> Is it uh, just like your great aunt helping you walk up the hills? There's nothing better than stilettos for going uphill. They act as little crampons as well. <laughs> the place you're talking about was Montmartre, and the place you're talking about the Cross of Hope. <laughs> yeah, well, she was a very chic one. My, <laughs> my great great aunt, sorry. Oh, look at that with the river running through, and then everyone enjoying themselves in the background. I'd love to carry on the walk, but to be fair, all of our guests are down there, so I think we need to go back. Around. We probably can, can't we? Yeah. I think you're right. You have such a better sense of direction than I do. Uh, you look very beautiful. Thank you very much. Anthropology sales. Oh. <laughs> yes. We're looking at the old steam engine, and we've realised that this was part of the history of Cousin sur Vavre, because here it's telling us that in 1880 they discovered a lead mine in Crozon sur Vavre. They thought it would work for a hundred years, but it only worked until 1901. It's been unexploited ever since. And this is the last vestige of that time. But in this old postcard, you can see this steam engine working at the site of the old mine. It's possible that it would have started again in time, but the problem is that the First World War, which came after the closure of the mine, decimated all of the villagers in the area. The male population dropped drastically, and extraordinarily, the population has never recovered. It is nowhere near what it used to be before the First World War in any of the local villages. I think that these are the electric bicycles that yes. the village now also rents to people who Isn't are visiting. I love everything they're doing. Have I ever said how much I love living here? Have you seen how adorable this car is? I feel like we like, need a car like this. Oh, it is adorable. It's been 60s so My father would have loved that. Now that's France. I France like in a car. It'll match the shutters. <laughs> no, Philip, we do not need the car. It's getting really busy. Yeah. If I can make my way through to everyone. We have to go home. If we leave now, we'll be exactly on time for dinner. Can I just say, Mummy, yes. this is one of my favourite outfits on you ever. Oh my goodness. Yes, yeah, you look. I've it for years. Well, this old thing, you look beautiful. This is so different from last night, Philip, but I love it. I love you using the Ardmore tablecloth. It's one of my favourites, actually. And also, we've never used it in here since putting the vase in here. That's true. And it's amazing how similar it looks to the vase. I love it so much. Yeah, the giraffes, the um, elephants. My motto is use the good stuff. And yeah. somehow, I didn't need to do my own motto. I kept this one safe and with a special occasion. No, it's but, gorgeous, uh, yeah, especially it. with this wallpaper as well. Yes. Absolutely. But that little giraffe peeking under the, the butter animals, dish. Little birds. Yes. And there's a little, um, what are they called again? Little um, bush baby. <gasps> okay, that's the best one ever. I did actually see a bush baby once on safari at did night. You? Yeah. It does look so good with this. Yeah. Um, today for the starter, we have a melon gazpacho uh, with crispy prosciutto and uh, goat cheese cream. Thank you so much. Thank you. Love the table, Philip. Thank you. And can I just say how gorgeous your brooch is? Um, you are absolutely on point for the table tonight. Absolutely I don't know how you did that. Wow. You win the award for jewelry. Best ever seen at Lenart. If you one, it goes with your eyes. I might try and look for a blue brooch now. I found the red one. Ladies and gentlemen, at and we drink our soup from the bowl. Well, in Dutch you say orc, 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 soup eat with fork. Orc, 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 eat soup with a fork. 
Correct. It's, it's like this this joke you. trying to get you to say like 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 orc orc orc. Uh, you eat soup with a, and then people automatically say fork oh. rather than spoon. Yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> I'll get you all spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I thought it was a test. It's either a carrot rose or a pork croquette, so it's a pork stuff with pork. Uh, and then a carrot top and pea puree uh, and broad beans from the garden in an orange marmalade place. Whoa. Amazing. Wow, thanks. Thank Thanks for doing so, sorbets. We have a homemade uh, uh, strawberry, peach, and elderflower sorbet, and then lemon sorbet, and then the yellow uh, raspberries, first ones of the season, hand picked by Stephanie. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 yeah, there are very few. We have one each, yes. I think. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for not eating them. I'm surprised they got to the table. I'll be <laughs> honest, Mummy and I did have five of them. Uh, there was still enough for one each. That's why we didn't have any strawberries for many years. <laughs> mummy. It was Mummy all the time. Thank you all for joining us for more La Land Life. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my patrons and a reminder to all of you that this week's patron video is a full explanation of all of the structural problems that we have in the Grand Salon and the solutions that we found to tackle that and at the same time to remodel the bedrooms upstairs. I also share with you the report on the chapel and discuss the way that we're moving forward with it. And today I would like to say a special thank you to the Dauphins and Dauphines of La Land, Jarko Vandana Kama. Brian Kelsey and Phil Burnt, Jimmy Kemp, Cynthia M. Kleist, and Laurel Lace. Thank you for supporting the Chateau Diaries, and thank you to all of you, and I can't wait to see you again on Sunday.